The sequence begins with the numbers 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and continues indefinitely. Each number is obtained by adding the last two digits together. If we were to take a perfect or golden rectangle, break it down into smaller squares based on Fibonacci's sequence, and divide each with an arc, the patterns begin to take shape. We begin to see Fibonacci's spiral. The spiral in and of itself is insignificant. Its importance is revealed in where we find it. Take for example the sunflower. The display of its florets are in perfect spirals of 55, 34 and 21. The sequence of Fibonacci. The fruitlets of the pineapple create the same spiral based on the sequence. The pine cone does the same. As currents move through the ocean and the tide rolls onto the shore, the waves that bring in the tide curve into a spiral that can be mathematically diagrammed onto a plot at the points 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and 55. Buds on trees, sand dollars, starfish, petals on flowers, and especially the nautilus shell are formed with this exact same blueprint. With each segment of growth, the Nautilus adds to itself one more value on Fibonacci's scale. This blueprint can be seen around us on a small scale every day, but the greatest example of all is directly above our heads. At an average of 100,000 light years across, even the spiral of the galaxies above us are formed with the exact design that the tiny shell is formed. This sequence, or blueprint, appears to be the trademark of a designer, a proof of a creator. You, you speak about God. We call Allah God. What is Allah? Allah, by from the Islamic perspective, means the God, the absolute, indivisible God. The Holy Quran says, "Qul hu Allahu ahad." Say, God is unique, one. Allahu samad. God is independent. Nothing depends. He depends on nothing. Everything depends on Him. Lam yalid. He does not beget, nor is He begotten, nor is He born. This absolute God has no frame of reference. Frame of reference implies something that is bound within time, matter, and space. The problem with these arguments is we keep constantly debating on the issue of bringing God to the relative world. The relative world cannot exist without an absolute creator, and that's the argument. You keep arguing on the issue of God in the relative sense. God is not transient. He is the necessary existent. We are the transient existent. An absolute cannot be defined, but we understand it indirectly for this relative universe it can never exist without an absolute creator.
Holy Prophet Muhammad is made to say, say, he is God the one and only. He said, Ahad, one and only. Jesus said, Echad, meaning one and only. Moses said, Echad, meaning one and only. What is the difference? It's the same word, meaning the same thing. have known these facts about human development in the 7th century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. Muslims and others are justified in concluding that these facts could only have been revealed to Muhammad by the one known who knows all about us, not only about how we developed, but how we live and function. The unity of these three faiths consists in the unity of God. You see, in the fundamentals of the teachings of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, there is not an iota of difference. I have left you a book revealed by God, the Quran, which is light and guidance.